Oké, okay, I'm back with a new video. And I look nice and pale again, but I don't care. So you shouldn't either. Um, this video is going to be about the requirements you need to be allowed to call yourself a witch. The requirements you need to be or to become a witch. Now, in my opinion, you all know this. People that know me know that I am 100% convinced, sure, that you cannot become a witch. You are a witch or you are not a witch. You are born a witch or you aren't born a witch. And um, that's it. It solves a lot of problems. And if you're interested, I made a video about this, I think two years ago or something. And just go through my list of videos and you will stumble on it sooner or later. Or just Google or type in the search thing. Um, you cannot become a witch. Or no, you cannot become a witch or something. But uh, requirements to be allowed to call yourself a witch. Some say that it's about uh, certain tools, items, tools. Like a black mirror or a magical mirror. You at least have to have something like that to, you know, consider yourself to be a witch, you know. No, um, I have a magical mirror. I don't like black mirrors, so I don't use black mirrors. But the mirror that I use the most is the one in my bathroom. Well, it's not really a bathroom. It's more a cell. Um, it's so small, I don't think you can consider this a bathroom. It's a cell with a sink and a toilet and a shower and that's it. Um, above the sink is a mirror and that's the one that I use the most. I just step into my bath cell, shower cell, and I use a little tea light and I place it in front of me, you know. I sort of... Uh, make sure that the toothbrushes aren't in the way and, you know, my makeup is, you know, shaft on the side and I place my little tea light there and then I start scrying in my normal bathroom mirror, shower cell mirror. Um, so do you need a magical mirror or a black mirror? No, you don't. Uh, some say you at least have to use a... You have to be in the possession of a wand or staff. No, you don't, because you can use a pen or marker or your finger or your whole hand to, you know, bring the energy towards a certain target of your choice and do whatever you want to do, you know? For God's sakes, use the vacuum cleaner if you want to, you know? Uh, or a flashlight. Um, if, by the way, and I want to stress this, if you are a witch, then you do not need these items. You don't need these tools because you are smart and creative and flexible enough to come up with something else, you know? Um, tarot decks, oracle decks, sticks and bones and coins, need them, you don't need them. You absolutely don't need them. Um, <clears throat> there are a lot of items and tools that... Crystals. Do you need crystals? No, you might as well, you know, find a beautiful rock that calls you. And that's important. Intuition and being connected with things in your environment. So a simple, ordinary, stupid rock can mean the world to you where crystals, you know, are just... Bricks or stones or pebbles or whatever. Um, it might surprise you that a lot of river pebbles, for example, radiate a lot more energy and the energy that you will be able to need in your practice than um, glossy, shiny, sparkly crystals that you buy on Amazon or on some kind of website or in a magical witchy new age shop so do you need crystals no you don't herbs just check your kitchen and you will find everything you need and more you know um scrying bowl if i want to scry i scry in flour if i'm making bread 
I can, you know, work with flour and uh, scry in it and I don't need to sit down and silence my mind and go in meditation and use water in a special fancy witchy bowl or something. I can just use something simple and scry in coffee beans or flour or something. Again, if you are a witch, you will find a way to scry in something, a bed of flowers, a dead fly, a swampy area while you're walking the dog, coffee beans, or you're going to use them anyway if you want to make coffee flour. If you are into baking bread, then you can scry in flour. You don't need a bowl with something cool like... <sighs> okay, so... Um, what else? A sword, a knife, an ethemy or whatever. A simple bread knife or kitchen knife works just as well. Um, you have to be born with the mind of a witch to be able to practice the craft in a way it's supposed to be crafted, done, you know? Um, else you're going to be stuck with all these fancy items and they aren't magical at all. They are sold to you as they were magic, cool. Or, you know, something witchy that you absolutely need in order to practice. And it's a lie. So, all these items and tools, do you need them? No. And you definitely don't need them when you are a witch. When you are a witch, again, you will find a way to do your thing, everything witchy you want to, without being a slave to the items that are sold to you as absolutely necessary. Necessities, you know, fuck them. So, um, tools and items out of the window. I think this uh, explains a lot. Then we have gifts and talents like necromancy and divination and being a psychic and have a very strong compassionate feeling towards items and persons and beings around you. And um, okay, this is a little bit of a tricky one because let's say you are my mom. Um, and you are able to see dead people. And dead people come to visit you quite a lot. Does this make you a witch? No. Do you need them in order to call yourself and consider yourself a witch? No, because she is not a witch. She just, you know, sees dead people. And that's it. A lot of cats and dogs see dead people and other beings and entities. Do they... Care? No, it's normal to them. Is my dog a witch? Is your cat a witch? No. Um, so do you need this? Is it absolutely necessary to see dead people or, you know, um, have this power of working with tarot cards or the knowledge to read the signs in the stars or, you know, um, feel the energy of the moon? A lot of Especially young girls feel the energy of the moon because, you know, hormones and such and being a woman and, you know, you start buying shit and uh, you want to brush your hair every five minutes and you need, have, feel the need to put makeup on. And um, if you are strongly connected to the phases of the moon, it's probably just hormones and not you being a witch. So, um... But a lot of witches do have certain skills as for talking to animals and trees and babies and dead people and, you know. But um, manipulating energy is a good one. Witches do have a lot of these gifts or talents and they are very skilled in um, using them more than normal or average people. But, you know... Um, you don't need them. So, um, I know a lot of witches that do offerings to the Fae and work with Draugr and they are just farmers and they don't consider themselves witches. They don't feel that they are witchy or 
magic or whatever. It's just something that belongs to a human life, I think. Um, skills. Do you have to have certain skills? Well, I don't think you have to have certain skills. There is a weird obsession with tar tarot. Um, I think in my country, um, there's the strong feeling and need to work with the stars and a lot of farmers work with the stars and um, birds, reading birds instead of tarot cards. Oracle cards, bones, coins, whatever. They read birds. Or they read trees. But they are not necessarily witches. So do you need all these skills that are, you know, considered to be witchy? I don't think you have. You know, you have to be able to, you know. Astrology is not really my thing. Numerology is not really my thing. Do I need them? No, I don't need them. I don't even know what I'm skilled at, you know. I don't even want to think about this. Um, but I will do another video about it, for just for the fun of it. So, um, then we have other witches, especially, that think you need an initiation to be allowed to consider yourself a witch. You don't need an initiation. And you definitely don't need a bloodline that screams witch. You know, um, it's just stupid. I saw on something, I think three, two or three years ago, a witch in a witchcraft community screaming all over the place that her witchcraft DNA um, went back 40,000 years. And I was looking at this, I was reading it, and I read it again, and I was like, do I really want to know this? Who fucking cares, you know? It's about you, it's about here, it's about now. Do you consider yourself a witch based on the items you have, or the talents you are gifted, or the skills you have, you know? Even somebody with Down syndrome can become a surgeon. If you give it her, him enough time to get this knowledge, you know, here and working and active and then can execute certain... Um, so, even when there is no sign of witchcraft, in your DNA, in your lineage, then it's still very possible that you are a witch. And that you are based on that feeling and make a decision that you will live a witchy life because you consider yourself to be a witch. Um, now, I think practicing magic is something that is deeply embedded in the human DNA, in your system, in everybody's system. It's not, it doesn't depend on a lineage or a family or your bloodline or whatever. It's everybody has this ability to work with magic. And that's something else that I want to address that not everybody that practices magic is a witch. There are a lot of businessmen, for example, that um, go to classes that are about remote viewing and influencing and, you know, the Silva whole Silva course. They are not witches, but they do practice magic and work with energy and learn to read somebody's body language and feel energy and, you know, manipulate energy and uh, get what they want. And, um, but that doesn't make them a witch. So if you feel that you are drawn to witchcraft and you feel like you are coming home, and that it makes you happy, and it makes your heart jump, and it makes your eyes glow, then you are a witch. And if you practice magic just for the fun of it, that's also 
totally okay. And if you have doubts, am I a witch? I practice magic, but you know. Um, like I said, you are born a witch or you aren't born a witch. And even though everybody has some degree of working with energy and manipulating energy and the outcome around you, that doesn't necessarily make you a witch. But what do you need in order to call yourself a witch or the requirements to consider yourself a witch? You know, it's not about tools and initiations and bloodline and um, certain skills and talents, you know, it's something way deeper. Um, I know, for example, a lot of boys that are experimenting with being bisexual and even trans, and they even go, you know, um, experimenting with being gay and being a woman and then suddenly suddenly they they it's just a phase they just want to know what it's like to be a woman and they want to know what it's like to have sex with another man or boy and um when they are 24 25 26 they just you know go back to being boring plain heterosexual and they fall in love with a woman or a girl and they have a, start a family and have kids and um, so that's a little bit the same I think there's a difference be between you know trying new things out and um, experimenting and it's the same I think if you are a witch you will know you are a witch and you don't need all these fancy shiny glittery cool things so um, throw everything out of the window and that's it. See you next time. Bye.